Hello and welcome. My name is Gerhard and I'm a data scientist and book author at SAS. In my webinar series, Data Quality for Data Science, we're going today and take a look on missing values in machine learning and you will go and meet my old aunt Suzanne and we will find out why she gives us, the data scientists, a hard time. So who is my aunt Suzanne and why does she give us, the data scientists, a hard time? My aunt Suzanne is already quite an elderly lady. She got her phone in the mid of the 1960s. And at that time, in the country where my aunt lives, you were not a customer to your, to your te telephone provider, you were an applicant. You were hoping to get a phone connection, you were waiting for a long time, and you were happy uh, if you finally got one. Consequently, customer data, analytic customer relationship management, and knowing the customer was not a big topic for the telephone providers at that time. They only needed the billing address to send the bill to, and that's it. So data like date of birth or gender or other uh, variables about their customers were, were of no interest because no one needed them to segment and or to know more about your customers. However, that changed in the 1990s because then other providers were allowed to enter the market and the, 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 the telephone providers found out that it makes a lot of sense to know more about your customers, to be able to segment um, your customers into age groups, uh, uh, get more insight into their lifestyles and so on. So since the mid of the 1990s, it is mandatory to provide the date of birth on a new contract with that uh, telephone provider. However, my aunt never changed her contract type. She had her phone. This was enough to call her daughter or her friends, and that's it. And she also did never answer any of the customer questionnaires, which also uh, provided some upgrades or some uh, additional benefits if in return the company would get some data about you. She found this question as stupid, she just found and that's it. And believe me, she's not the only one with that data history. There are lots of Uncle Josephs or Aunt Stephanie's or others or the neighbors of my aunt who behaved the same and did not provide additional data. After we hear that story, let's now take a look how this might affect the data themselves that are collected by that company. So if the uh, phone provider or the data scientist in his cubicle analyzing the data uh, and uh, takes now a look on the customer age variable, he might see a distribution as we see it here. Yeah. Younger age uh, 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 segments, middle age, older age segments. And maybe he also gets an additional profile and finds out that 9.1% of the age variables are missing because date of birth is missing. And after you have this information now, uh, maybe a very long discussion starts. 9.1% is not too much. We maybe can impute this. How should we impute it? Should we impute it with the mean? Should we impute it with another uh, imputation method? Should, should we impute it that way that we uh, maintain the distribution of, uh, of the analysis? Very long discussion. This can take hours and ages. However, the point is, if we consider the story that I told you earlier on, what is the age range that is possible to be missing? Is the age range extending over the entire uh, span of age variables? Or maybe this is just possible at the older age uh, values. Because only my aunt Suzanne and her friends, they are able to have such old contracts, which they signed back in the 1960s or earlier. And consequently, the missing values are most likely not distributed uh, evenly over the entire distribution, but they are most likely there where we see the red colors uh, in, in, in the histogram. This means that any discussion on what is the best statistical imputation method is useless if you ignore the business context and the 
uh, understand the process who collected the data and also understand the stories that are relevant for this process as I told you for my answer then. The problem in general here is that typically missing values are analyzed in a univariate way only. So uh, you very often see if you have a certain number of variables, you see uh, absolute and relative frequencies, you, you, you might see bar charts. However, this information only gives you a small part of the full picture. This only tells you how many of your variables, of your features, are infected by the missing value disease. That's it, no more. However, we maybe want to know how many full records do we have? How many of our customers in our uh, data table that we are going to analyze have full records, meaning no missing value at all? We also do not get any information out of that. Is there a pattern in the structure of the missing data? Maybe there is some relationship in the, in the data here, as I told you earlier with my aunt Suzanne, that the missing values are not, do not occur randomly, but systematically. How can we detect such situations that missing values occur systematically? One thing that you already mentioned is that simple frequencies, descriptive statistics per variable do not really help. Another idea is that we um, create an indicator variable with the flag missing yes or no for a certain variable. For example, for age variable, is it missing yes or no? And then compare the distribution of other variables like customer start date, region, product portfolio uh, in the context of that variable. This gives us the chance to see are there differences maybe and we could find out that the many missing values in our database where they are really missing they are very often tied to very old contract types which gives an indication if this happens, it is very unlikely that the missing values occur randomly. Important is here that business and process knowledge, what is the process that generates the data um, about the company and some background is key. So you need to have a business understanding before you start analyzing the data. And also, in some cases, it's even better to define imputation rules on expert knowledge because you know the process, you know the content, instead of starting discussions in a very uh, deep and detailed way on which mathematical method is best. If you miss the business context, even your statistical method, method might not be able to compensate that. A very nice trick that I use very often in my uh, feature engineering and analyzing and quality checking the data is that I train a simple predictive model to explain the missing yes-no indicator. So for example, uh, as I said earlier, I generate a yes-no indicator for a certain variable. Is it missing yes or no? And then I try to find out, can I explain this missing yes or missing no by any other variables? Because if the missing values occur randomly, then we will most likely not find a model. If we find a model with some meaningful input variables, we have an indication that these missing values do not occur randomly, but rather systematically. A very simple way to do this is, for example, in SAS Vision Analytics, where we create a derived variable for missing yes or no, either by coding it or by using a GUI where I say, if the certain variable is missing, then it's one, otherwise it's zero. And next, I can use this variable directly in the, um, in the interface to train a decision tree, for example. Because if I now train a decision tree for this uh, missing value indicator variable that I created here, if the variables were missing at random, I would most likely not be able to train a meaningful tree 
I, I would not get meaningful splits. However, if there's a systematic pattern that the missing um, event is tied to certain value ranges to other variables, then I uh, might get a tree as we see it like here. Very simple to create, but very powerful to understand the context of your data and missing value pattern. Another way to do this is, for example, using a macro that I, uh, that I wrote. And I, I call this the missing value profiling macro. This is a simple macro that does the following. It concatenates for each record a missing value string with zeros and ones. So this means zero means not missing, one means missing. So for example, here in my um, example data, I have eight variables. And in that case, the third variable and the, uh, the sixth variable in the, uh, in the variable list have a missing value for a specific record. So for example, this could be, uh, for example, my Ansusen here. If the first variable might be region, the other variable might be uh, maybe contract type, and the third variable is age, and here we would have a one. This is missing, other variables are not missing, not missing, and then maybe another variable like uh, what is the broadband usage? It might be missing because my, uh, what is the broadband uh, internet connection contract type? It might be missing because my aunt doesn't have such a connection. This might also be uh, a way how you, how you interpret and how you connect such, um, such uh, strings of missing values indicators. If you now go and profile them, this gives you a very nice input. For example, that you see I have around 60% of records which do not have a missing value at all. I have full records overall here. I see it here. And then I have uh, a certain amount of, of records where I have one missing value. For example, here uh, I might be missing uh, the fourth variable. Here I'm missing the fifth variable and so on. So running this analysis gives me an insight how do my records cluster and can be segmented based on the missing yes no information and we also see that there are a few records which have a large number of missing values more than four missing values more than five and so on the nice thing here is that for example this could be the segment of my old aunt Suzanne and her friends because this might be the the, the segment where all data is here, however, not the age variable, because this was not mandatory uh, to, 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 to provide a value when she signed the contract, so it is still missing. And this is also a very good segment then for additional customer actions, because this might be a segment which is most likely not so interested in a very uh, sophisticated download plan for your smartphone or for certain internet connectivity, because these are most likely old people. However, this group might be very interested in having uh, a certain hardware with large keys because it's easier to dial or an automat uh, automatic dial through uh, uh, key where she can automatically form her daughter or uh, specified people in emergency cases. So running such analysis can also surface segments in your, in your customers, which not only take a look on data quality, but also on actions which you can run in your campaign and in your, in your customer communications. The macro that I'm showing here can be downloaded from GitHub, and I will uh, show you the link later on in this presentation. The macro also allows to run automatically some multivariate analysis, also to uncover systematic pattern. So for example, uh, you see here a way how in, in invoke the SAS macro by specifying the, the data, the variable names, and some options. And another example is that I'm using principal component analysis in order to cluster not the variables themselves on their values, but just on the missing yes, no factor. So I'm not interested which variables are close to each other 
because on the on the values and on the cor correlation, but which are very close to each other because they have a very uh, similar missing um, missing value uh, structure and occurrence. I admit that I'm misusing principal components here a little bit because it should only be used for interval variables, but for explanatory uh, purposes, it's also possible to use this on my dummy variables for the for the for the missing values, and it allows to uncover certain groups of variables, for example, these three. The fact that they are close to each other in this analysis means that they are missing very often together. And uh, this allows you to uncover some patterns and some findings in order to understand, does it make sense here to, to, to look in the, in the, uh, into the business background to find out what is the story behind this, that these variables are missing together so often, and that the, the missing value occurrence uh, takes place so often. So what we've seen here is one example out of many, and in this webinar series I'm going to present more in, 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 in other lectures, is that data quality is also an analytic and data science topic. Analysis data might be judged as fine and usable from a technical perspective, but our requirements as data scientists often go beyond these items. We often need more from our data compared to doing simple reports and, and other analysis. So today we spoke about the topic on uh, systematic pattern and missing values uh, analysis. This is what we discussed today. However, there are also many more topics that are relevant for analytics. For example, historic data and historic snapshots, correlation between variables, uh, missing values that reduce the number of usable observations very quickly, and also distribution of variables that are relevant from a data science analytic point of view, which I will go and address in other series of this webinar. For today, I thank you very much for listening. And on the final two slides, I will show you some links where you can find more content and more downloads. So you can find more information on my GitHub page you find the link to this GitHub page in the notes uh, to this video. And there's also a paper that I gave on the SARS Global Forum in Dallas uh, back in 2015, where you also find this story about my Aunt Suzanne and a couple of other stories that show you that it's important to profile your data and get an insight of your data very early. Thanks for listening. Uh, here you also see additional links where you can reach me on Twitter and on, on LinkedIn. You can also see more content on my GitHub page or in my SAS Press books. And there are also um, a webinar series on the SAS DAG YouTube channel where I present on, uh, frequently on data science and analytics topics. Thank you very much. Goodbye.